Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Uh, gonna talk today a little bit more about my adventures in learning Arabic. Again, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. Okay, Arabic. Uh, my first task uh, that I've assigned to myself is to become more familiar with the writing system. Because if I can read, then a lot of stuff becomes available to me. Uh, stories, even grammar explanations, uh, dictionary. If I can't read, then I can't access these things. Now, with regard to the reading, uh, I'm taking the approach that I'm gradually going to discover this language, Arabic, the reading, through a variety of things that I'm doing, typing on Lexi logos, reading, listening to the text to speech. Gradually, it becomes a little clearer. It's always frustrating when you can't remember the letter or the form of that letter inside the word as opposed to uh, the way it looks at the beginning or as a standalone. And so it is it is frustrating that we can't remember things that we thought we had learned. However, I am continuing with my sort of approach to, I just want to discover, I just want to learn through exposure uh, and seeing how the different language, uh, different letters perform. I want to gradually get used to it. One bit of advice that carries over from golf, my wife and I were playing golf and uh, one of the marshals on the course is, is also a very good golfer and he came by and he saw me hit a ball into the, into the pond there and he said, you know, what you need to do is this. He gave me one simple tip and I then proceeded to hit the ball very well. And uh, then I said, geez, you know, you could really help me with my golf game. And he says, only one tip at a time. You can't absorb more than one. And I think this is very important when it comes to language learning. Uh, I, as I gradually try to improve my golf game through feeling it better and stuff, occasionally I can have one tip. If I get more than one tip, uh, it's confusing. And the same with language learning. So I uh, have downloaded various apps, uh, you know, to help me to see what works and what doesn't work. So for example, I found this uh, resource here and uh, it starts explaining things like Aleph is the first letter of the Arabic alphabet. So here's what they tell you. Aleph is the first letter, uh, blah, 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 uh, most commonly used due to the several sounds it represents. Aleph is a moon letter. He doesn't explain what that is, but whatever. It's a moon letter, typically pronounced as A, but it has many forms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Aleph is one of the three letters, Aleph, Wow, and Ya, that might be either a consonant or a vowel. When Aleph is used as a vowel, the Hamza on the Aleph is removed and only the Aleph remains. Consonant Aleph always comes with a mark called Hamza. Consonant Aleph represents all four kinds of sounds. Aleph with a Fafa, we put the Fafa on top of the Hamza. It might have a sound like a ah in and or a ah in under. Aleph with a kasra, we put the kasra under the hamza. Note that in this case, the hamza comes below the aleph. Blah, blah, blah. Aleph with a dhamma, we put the dhamma on top of the hamza. Aleph with a sukun, we put the sukun on top of the hamza. Aleph, like all the letters, cannot come with a sukun at the beginning of a word. Sukun only comes with medial and final letters. I mean, this is such overload. If I had not already had a lot of exposure to this, uh, including on my Lexi Logos keypad, I can pick on a Aleph with a little squiggly on top or without a squiggly on top or a squiggly on the bottom and just see how it performs. So medial, medial vowel Aleph usually takes this form. Never, Aleph never connects to the left side. It always comes with a sukun and the letter before it always comes with a fatha depending on the position in a word, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it just goes on and on. I mean, there is no way that I could absorb any of this information. I mean, now, after having spent a quite a few days uh, typing on my Lexi logos, reading, seeing all this stuff, it starts to make sense. I couldn't understand, I would not be under, able to understand it initially, and certainly I still can't remember it just based on reading it. So the first thing is keep it simple, simple, one bit of advice or help or explanation at a time and mostly just try to get used to it. I'm trying to, I, I want to like Arabic. I once did a, a blog post on my blog saying language learning is like following in, falling in love. You have to kind of fall in love with this language, see all the different features, 
uh, start to like it and stuff. So that's kind of the process that I'm going through. Uh, there are some frustrations. For example, you know, I printed out what I thought was the most useful list of, uh, I can't remember which site I got this off of, but a list of all the letters. And, uh, but it's not complete because there are, uh, um, it, it is, this is a good list because it shows you all four forms of each letter and it has the uh, sound that it represents. So as I'm looking at a word and I can't figure out uh, what letter this is, uh, you know, it's got a dot on top or a dot on bottom or two on the bottom or two on the top, which is it? I consult this list and I, oh yeah, it's that one. Of course I forget, but I continue doing that. However, you know, there are things like, you know, there's this very useful ya with two dots at the bottom, which is, gives you like an I sound. But there's also a ya on my Lexi Logos uh, keyboard with no dots underneath it. Where's this guy? I can't find it on any list, but it shows up on my Lexi Logos keyboard and I know it's very useful because I have to use it from time to time. There's also a ha with two dots on top. It also doesn't show up on any of these lists that I've looked at. So, and again, I have it on my Lexi Logos keyboard, so I find that I need it. Uh, I'm doing a lot of typing now using the dictation function at link. So I study a lesson at link. Um, we have, you know, for example, our mini stories, we have 10 versions of the mini, 10 mini stories, but we're, we're getting them redone. Uh, but, uh, so I do a lesson and then I go through for each page that I've done. I don't do the flashcards right now. I'm just doing dictation. So I'm forced to try to type what I hear. The problem is that the text to speech, and even in, in human speech, it's difficult to tell. What was that? Was that a D? Was it a D? Was it a th sound? Was it a z sound? In fact, sometimes I think it's a this sound, it's an F sound. So it's difficult. So trial and error, I try to uh, type out that word. Uh, it wasn't even close for the longest while. Now I'm starting to get the, some of them. Uh, you know, I think if you, if you only get one letter wrong, they say close on the system. So that's fine. But I actually have hit a few where I thought what I heard and then I type. And of course, the uh, keypad that we use at Link it doesn't give you the letters, whereas the Lexi Logos, it has A, B, C, D. So M, N, I can go straight to where the most likely candidate is. Although in Arabic, sometimes, you know, some sounds have two symbols that could be this one or could be that one. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm struggling. I'm working to get the writing system down so that I can read. Because once I can read, then there are some good resources. Someone recommended this Medina Arabic, which I have over here on my computer. And it's really quite good. I can, I can, you know, I'm looking forward to doing it. And you know, this, so this is going to give me a little bit of the sort of structure that I need as I'm struggling through these lessons, but they introduce, they refer to these Arabic words and I want to be able to read them. So my first task, if it takes me a few weeks is to get to where I can with some confidence, get the odd one wrong, even get lots of them wrong, but I can start to feel that I can read the language. So that's where I am right now, working on the Arabic letters, trying to get to a level where I can read. And that's all I have to say. And, and I'm doing it mostly through a process of discovery rather than through, through some process of explanation, like that first explanation that I read to you. And I look forward to your comments. Bye for now.